The Museum of the Future sent me to Dubai to check out this incredible building. It feels like I am in space right now. Look at this. This is a living museum. It is quite the engineering marvel. For the past 25 hours, I have been traveling halfway across the world to see one amazing thing the most beautiful building in the entire world. Last time we were here, we saw the Burj Khalif Tower, which is the tallest building in the world. I was here with Lincoln. He was just a little guy. He was like 11 years old. I come from an engineering background. My dad's a structural engineer. My great grandfather is a structural engineer. This building is a building that my great grandfather designed. It's a beautiful temple just outside of the beltway of Washington, DC. My father was a structural engineer of a building in Hong Kong, this beautiful temple. Well, my father and my great grandfather have left a long lasting legacy. In some ways, I feel like our YouTube videos are going to be the legacy that I leave for future generations after me. But I've never seen a building designed quite like this. This building is made up of 1,024 steel panels, and it is meant to look like a giant eye looking into the future. And what's interesting is there is not one structural beam inside of this. The one question I had is, what is this writing on here? You don't see buildings with writing. We may not live for hundreds of years, but the products of our creativity can leave a legacy long after we are gone. The future belongs to those who can imagine it, design it, and execute it. It isn't something you await, but rather create. So we've established that this building is beautiful on the outside. Let's go inside and see what it's really about because I honestly have not even been inside of it yet. Let's go. All right, this is it. This is the moment. We are going inside. I love that there's shrubbery around the whole outside. And then here is the entrance, this giant door. <laughs> I am now going in. There are revolving doors on both sides of this. And then you just walk in and oh my goodness. Once you get inside of this building, it is massive and beautiful. There's a couple of elevators over on the side and then a floating staircase. They call it a living museum because every year it's going to be changing based off of the current technology, science, math, whatever the future looks like, they're going to have the best of the best inside of this museum. We haven't even gone to any of the floors yet and I'm already kind of blown away with the inside of this building. I don't really know how this thing is flying, but there's a thing that's flying. <laughs> Up in the air. Yeah, it's just like a, some kind of animal. And like a spider looking thing, a jellyfish looking guy. Let's go check out our first floor. I'm not even sure which floor it is. We're just gonna go and be surprised. Let's go. <laughs> I went wrong stairwell. I don't know how that happened. These are the elevators and uh, we're just gonna hop on one and see where it takes us. This is one cool elevator. Check it out. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Wow. Whoa. You know, whenever I tour some place, I like to take you somewhere that nobody else gets to go. Well, this is the seventh floor of the museum. This is a private area. I would imagine that people could use this for like a meeting space or a large event. But if you come to this museum, don't plan on coming to the seventh floor because it is very difficult to get up here. You have to have special access, which we have. But a few important things to notice. This is an expansive space and this help. Can you hear the echo? Echo, echo. I can hear the echo in my voice. The cool thing about this room is that it does highlight the fact that there are no internal pillars that are holding it up. Right here is the giant pillar. And that is the structural integrity. It's on the walls, it's on the outside. You can see them right there. You can see them up there also. On the fourth floor of this building, it's called the Healing Institute. It looks like there's a bunch of different plants and species inside of jars that are glowing in here. This room has 2,400 species represented that are from the Amazon rainforest. And what this healing floor is about is how can we use artificial intelligence and science in order to heal the rainforest to help with climate control issues that we have. And by researching the past of different species that are now dead, and then also ones that are still living, hopefully we can use technology in the future to help save the planet and heal the planet in a way. And this is kind of what that represents here inside of this incredible room. I could sit in here for hours. It's like so soothing to see all of these different plants. 
and animals. They're just everywhere. Like, I don't know if I'm supposed to touch it, but I'm touching it. I'm touching it. <laughs> okay, so I just came out of this elevator and now check it out. It was kind of scary because it goes all the way down. You can see the whole way up the elevator. I need to go and see what is down there. To give you an idea of exactly where we are at inside of the building, this is like the big part of the eye, and then this is the lower part. It dips down right here. We're on level two right now. Every single year, I go to Las Vegas and I see the best of the tech. Well, the way the Museum of the Future thinks about it is this is a living museum. They're going to show you the best of the future, but it can change out all the time. So instead of going to CES once a year, if you come here to the Museum of the Future, you can see some of the things that you might end up seeing at future CESs. Looks like Audi e-tron, a futuristic version of it. Whatever this thing is, it looks like you've got like robotic flying arms and you can fly all over the place. I do want that to be part of the future. This is a cyber dog. I saw Marquez Brownlee do a video on them once. Sometimes they're kind of creepy. Hi, robot, anybody? All right, we've made it to the top, or I guess the middle top of this building. And it's crazy because you can see there's a train that goes right past there. There's the highway, you see all of the big buildings. And it appears that we are here during somewhat of a sandstorm because my visibility doesn't go very far and you just see like sand, which is not really pollution, it's just sand, but it's not like what you see in the movies when a sandstorm comes and it like destroys everything in its path. It's just windy and uh, dusty, you feel it in your eyes. It's still not that enjoyable, but it's not like deadly. I used to live in Arizona and we had a lot of sandstorms. They were called haboobs. And if we come down one floor from level two, we see the future hero section. There are multiple stations that are here that encourage kids to be creative and have fun and learn things. These are, it's like a building station where they take these different blocks and sticks and they build, for example, maybe they'll tell them, build a house. And then as soon as they're done, imagine this is an entire house. So as soon as they've achieved their reward, they get all of these balls that fall down out of the sky and they're happy and they have fun and they get a reward that's real. This is not a screen. This is balls that are everywhere. Pretty cool. Now I think I have to clean them all up and put them away. This one is called the Imagine Lab and you have these little container things that you put into this and they all represent different things. That's a Dubai pearl is what this one represents right here. This one's like a nose one. It sounds so cool in here, by the way. Let's see. Soap. That is soap. It reminds me of that show Inside Out. You remember that where they have all their memories that are all stored in different places? It's kind of like what this room is like. Such a fun thing for kids. When you come up to the fifth floor, you actually take an elevator that looks like you are heading up into space inside of a rocket. One of the coolest elevator rides that I've ever been on. When you first come out of the fancy elevator, you come into this room where this looks like the metal from a spaceship, and it looks like you are in the space station looking out of this giant window at the moon. The next place that you go is a room where they show you a space station of the future. Part of it is an actual replica of the NASA space station that is out there right now. There's lots of people there, so I probably shouldn't go talk. But this is the station. It's right there. everything inside of this building is based off of what we might see in 2071. That helps you think about what will the future look like once we're multi-planetary, once we go to Mars or other solar systems. Hopefully this not only educates people about space, but also gets them excited to be part of whatever the next developments will be, and so that they want to have a career in science and STEM in space. It'd be really cool in 2071 if we could actually get to there. Somehow the world just popped out of that. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. As the sun sets on the Museum of the Future, I'm excited to see the lights turn on at nighttime because it's supposed to look amazing. And then tonight at four in the morning, I get to fly for 25 hours back to America. Was it worth it? Yes, 50 hours of travel to see this incredible building 
I would definitely do it again. Just next time, I'd really like to bring the family and have them check it out. Make sure to share this video with somebody that you think would find this interesting. And also, check out our video on the Hoover Dam and the inside of that. If you'd like to learn more about the Museum of the Future, I will put a link in the description. Thank you to the Museum of the Future for sponsoring this video. I should let go. I can't believe they came up with the idea to just build this in the middle of the Dubai desert. Robots and AI are coming. Let's just embrace the dogs. They all build things, I take things apart for YouTube.